on today's episode. Just checking that I'm connected to the OpenWRT network, so that's good. And I'll log in. So everything is looking good. Now I'll start an SSH session to it. So that we can check the status of the USB devices. Just simply LS USB. And we can see that it's found the, the root hub. Now if I turn on uh, my camera, check again. We can see indeed it has found the, 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 the camera, which is uh, connected to the USB device. So now turning to the application on uh, my phone, press on connect to open WRT. And we can see that it's found the camera up there in the left hand corner. We just enable the live view. And we can see the state of my desk, uh, untidy as usual. But uh, we have now uh, proof of the, uh, the concept, at least, that we have the DSLR dashboard connected via OpenWRT on a Zsun Wi-Fi card reader. Absolute genius. A little time ago, I showed how to flash OpenWRT firmware onto this little Nex router, um, the objective being to be able to connect using the uh, DSLR dashboard um, app to control my DSLR camera. And I thought it was a pretty neat and uh, a small solution. But somebody left a comment saying, well, Nikon have a, a much smaller device than, than this. Um, is there any smaller routers that we can use for the DSLR function, which uh, obviously set me, me thinking. And I happened to come across um, a discussion about um, this device, which is a Wi-Fi card reader. Uh, it has a little uh, micro SD slot, uh, which you put a, a card in, obviously. And uh, you can connect using an app to this, and it also provides a bridge function. But um, some hackers in, uh, in Poland, uh, clever guys, um, they managed to be able to get OpenWRT onto this guy, which set me thinking, if we can put OpenWRT on that, can we go one step further and get our DSLR dashboard running? So that's what I'm going to try today. This is the web page with the instructions for updating the firmware to OpenWRT. I've put a card in the device, so that's done. Next step is to connect to it. Look in the Wi-Fi settings. This is obviously it here. And with that connected, uh, we can execute this command. And that's returned the status of zero. And next we have to create a directory on the device called dot update on on the Windows machine. So it's dot update dot. And we have to do that by connecting to the device via an SMB server. So to connect via SMB to the, the server that's on the device, we have to go in using the file explorer, right mouse click on this PC and add the network location. And the address is backslash backslash 10.168.168.1 public. And it automatically gives it a name as a Samba server and we'll open it. So now we can see there's uh, just one file on the on the card there 
and we need to make that folder. So we go new and folder. And this has to be called dot update dot. Uh, into that folder, we need to copy the downloaded firmware, which will be in my downloads location. So here it is. For some reason, the first time I downloaded this, it was it was corrupted. So um, just be sure that it is uh, displayed as a .tar file. Now we go back to our file location into the update directory and paste the file. And now we're ready to go back to the instructions. So we've copied that. So the next thing is to instruct the device to update the firmware. So this is done by executing this command, which should return the status of two, which means it's going to go into its update routine. And we're just watching the LED now on the device. As it says here, wait for one long LED flash. Now we can see the rapid flashing happening there. And now we can see that we have OpenWRT running on the device. With OpenWRT installed, the next thing we need to install is this DD server software. And this is the connection between OpenWRT and the app on the, on the phone to control the DSLR dashboard. So there are various ways to do this. Uh, one way I'm showing here is to download th this update package. There's a, a batch file that this runs and you need to run it from the location where you've downloaded and unzipped the files. Um, the trick here is to hit the shift key down and left mouse click and then you can open a command window directly in the directory where your files are. You then paste the command and having pressed enter, we'll see what happens. You can just OK this, just a uh, yes. So when trying to install this package, what has happened is that it has found that there are things, dependencies, other files which are necessary to install. So I have installed those packages. I'm not going to document it here. Um, I'll do that in a different video if, uh, if people require it. Suffice it to say that um, you can download these files from the repository um, that, that holds the packages for uh, OpenWRT. Another trick that I found whilst doing this um, was some very neat software to be able to copy files to and from the Windows environment to uh, the OpenWRT environment. So I'll, I'll do a separate video on that. And also an extremely neat trick whereby you can put the Wi-Fi into a kind of bridged mode that enables it to connect simultaneously to an access point and still provide the open WRT as a, as a separate access point. So it's a client uh, to an access point that exists on your network and also becomes the open WRT access point that you connect to. And I'll do a video on that as well. It's a very neat way, um, the only way that you can actually download these packages uh, connected to the internet. Here we can see the internals. This picture is from the, the web page for the, uh, the Polish website, which I'll make a link to. And you can see that they've indicated all the, all the connections. So 
uh, here are the D plus and minus signals for the USB which are switched normally between the actual flash uh, reader itself, the card reader and the USB port. So we cannot normally connect the device itself, the uh, system on a chip, to the USB. That's why we have to take this apart and connect these connections directly to the USB uh, socket to, to use it. Also we can see that there are connections here, a reset, the SD card detect, a ground and a plus 5 volts. Um, the other challenge is that the 5 volt to 3.3 volt regulator is now located on the card reader board itself so we can't just simply remove that. Uh, also indicated here there are Ethernet connections directly uh, broken out from the chip. Of course nobody in their right minds would, uh, would try and connect an Ethernet jack to that port, would they? So what happened? Well when I disassembled the uh, lower card reader board I managed to uh, break one of the connections, I think I possibly pulled out one of the plated through holes when I removed one of the little pins. Uh, the upshot of that was that I no longer had 3.3 volts to the microprocessor. Um, so I removed the board entirely and using my Arduino little power supply unit I used that to generate uh, 5 volts for the USB side and also 3.3 volts by this cable here directly to the pin that you saw indicated in the in the previous uh, picture for the 3.3 volts on the uh, on the main board. Uh, what you can't see off over here is this is out of an old PC. It's just um, a USB um, extent expansion uh, type uh, connection, and all I did was to join the USB connections together so that they looped around so that I could then feed the cable out to my camera. Uh, also on this connection here by the cables uh, is the 5 volt feed into the USB port. Uh, something I'm thinking about for the future. Maybe this can be powered by a single uh, lithium polymer cell uh, 4.2 volts um, um, a little regulator down to 3.3 and uh, Maybe that will get away from the need to, to use 5 volts, but that's uh, for a future future project. So I help, hope you found that interesting. I've got another Z Sun on the way, which hopefully I won't uh, trash completely this time. And I'll do an update video once uh, I've got it all, all together.